Hi, this is Jason with Orchid Web here to talk about perhaps one of the most sought after Vanda species there is, Vanda cerulea. This particular variety is called Supra. Uh, Supra are known to be natural tetraploids, so they got the bigger, showier flowers than the standard diploid version, which is also beautiful. Uh, but they're popular because of the round flowers with sometimes flat and sometimes slightly twisted petals. But the tessellation is, is really what gets you. And though it's not truly blue, it is one of the closer flowers to having that blue purple tinge, that indigo color within the flower. There's many ways you can grow these. They're not that hard to grow. Uh, we tend to grow our larger specimens in baskets, uh, but we don't use bare root baskets since we're in Minnesota, which gets a lot of uh, heating in the winter, drying out our air. We use baskets lined with usually Oregon green moss. And then in the center, we'll fill in with just chunky charcoal or uh, pine bark mix. And that seems to be good enough and adequate. Allows them to grow about five to 10 years without repotting. So it's quite an easy way to handle these plants. Uh, they're very tolerant of a wide range of temperatures. Ideally, your evening temps should be 55 to 65 and your daytime 75 to 85. Somewhere in that range is perfect for Vanda cerulea. You can be a little outside of those ranges and still do just fine. These plants are mid to high elevation in the wild, say 800 to 1500 meters above sea level. So that's a pretty solid intermediate level growing plant. They don't need to be that large to flower. These ones here you see are plants we've had in our collection for 10 to 20 years. But let's take a look at some of the smaller production plants in pots. In a nursery, we do much better in pots than with bare root because we don't have high humidity and misters that go on multiple times a day. So they can grow just fine in plastic pots with a coarse bark mix or even plastic pots with New Zealand moss. We actually have very good luck with New Zealand moss, lots of active root tips in here. Uh, so despite it being wet, there's enough airflow to keep these plants happy. These plants also love light. You can see here we're in a south section of our greenhouse with no shade. So we're just blasting these with light. This is a very high light loving plant. Uh, these are native to northwest or northeast India, Thailand, Burma, and southwest China. Areas of about 800 to 1600 feet above sea level. So they're an intermediate grower. Uh, however, here in the summer they get hot and in the winter they get cool and they do just fine for us. So they're, they're highly adaptable. Uh, and these examples in flower are kind of on their way out. Uh, that's just the only ones we have right now to show you. But you still see some of the full color on some of these flowers. But as they age, they start to fade back to white. Consequently, they'll also open up whitish, especially if they don't have enough light. So that's another indicator. Uh, that you need more light if they're not opening up with a lot of color. And the cooler the evenings, uh, the, the more intense the color will be. So if you can get down to the 50s, you're going to get the most color out of these flowers. But there you have it, pot production. It's not that difficult. It's a great plant to grow in pots. Uh, and the roots are fairly well contained. When you repot, soaking the roots to make them more flexible will help you tuck some of them back in the pot. And sometimes you're just going to have to leave a few out or trim them off if they're getting in the way. They tend to have a lot of good healthy roots on the inside of the pots already.